You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Working with what the Bible doesn't say. I was asked two questions yesterday about things that the Bible doesn't tell us. One of the landmine survivors in the home nearby, when we visited, asked the classic question about Cain's wife. If God created Adam and Eve, and no one else, where did Cain's wife come from? And then in the class, two students asked me the question, Was Boaz married before he met Ruth? In both cases, the Bible doesn't provide an answer. How do we deal with questions like that? I think we deal with them differently in the two cases. You see, in the case of Cain's wife, the Bible provides no information for us to start from. It doesn't tell us about any other people God might have made. It doesn't tell us about any other children Adam and Eve might have. All sorts of well-meaning pastors have made all sorts of well-meaning guesses. But the Bible doesn't say. In a case like that, I think it's quite simple. We have to say, I don't know. We don't like saying, I don't know. But what else can we say, in all honesty? If the Bible doesn't say, and provides no clues, the only honest answer is, I don't know. Not guesswork, trying to defend the Bible, as if God's word needed us to support it with our imaginations. We simply have to say, I don't know. On the other hand, in the case of was Boaz married before he met Ruth? The Bible provides us with clues. In this case, the clues are a bit ambiguous and mixed, and point in more than one direction. But there are clues, and when there are clues, we can follow them. Perhaps the first clue is cultural. Boaz seems to have been of the same generation as Elimelech and Naomi. He was the Goel, the Redeemer, which makes him one of Elimelech's oldest surviving male relatives. I'll maybe talk about it in another cast, but there's another clue. Naomi and Boaz talk older than Ruth. So, two clues that Boaz was relatively old. Probably at least 40 or 50. By that age, it would be very unlikely for a male in ancient Israel to be unmarried. And Surely, if he was unmarried, the Bible would have commented on it, because it was unlikely. So, strong clue that Boaz was married. On the other hand, when we get to the end of the book, and Boaz is confronting the other Redeemer, the other Redeemer says, I cannot redeem it myself without damaging my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption yourself, for I cannot redeem it. Many commentators see a contrast here between the other Redeemer, who refuses to redeem for fear of spoiling his own inheritance for his other children, and Boaz, who generously takes on the responsibility, which would mean that he was married. On the other hand, the simple fact that nowhere in the Bible, neither in Ruth nor in the genealogies that include this clan, is Another wife, or other, uh, other children, of Boaz mentioned, is fairly strong evidence that he wasn't married. Surely at some point in this story, if there was a Mrs. Boaz before Ruth, we'd have been told about her, wouldn't we? So in this case, there are clues in the Bible, but the clues point in both directions. In such a case, like the first, the only answer we can give is, I don't know. The difference is that in this case, we have to think about it first. So, when you're faced with a question, which the Bible doesn't answer directly, the first thing to do is to look for clues. Sometimes the clues will point in one direction and one direction only. Then your answer's clear. In other cases, the clues are confused. Or, there are no clues. In which case, the only honest answer is, I don't know. Don't join the ranks of those who invent stories to provide answers. That's just messing with the Bible.